Hello everyone. This is going to be a quick tutorial to show people how to make their own blog on GitHub. Now, GitHub is owned by Microsoft, so don't publish anything too crazy on it. But the thing that's nice about the GitHub pages is, is that you don't need any sort of additional information outside of your email to sign up to be able to publish a web page. On GitLab, they require a credit card verification now, which I know can be kind of inaccessible for some people. So GitHub is probably the second best alternative. So what we are going to do is we're first going to find, and I'm going to include a link to this in the description. There is a pay, there is a project called Jekyll Now, and this project allows us to create a blog very very easily. Now, when we look at this, we can see that there are some basic instructions in order to do this. This can be helpful for, you know, reviewing if you've made any mistakes or anything like that and have additional information. So what we're going to do is we are going to copy this project onto our account. Now, you might be asking, how do we do that? Well, it's actually very simple. We just have to fork this project as such. So we're going to fork this, and the way we're going to name this is we're going to name this in a specific way so that it can be used directly with GitHub pages. And the way we're going to name it is we're going to name it our username, which happens to be Badger Nested. And then we're going to write GitLab, uh, GitHub, sorry, dot IO. <clears throat> So badgernested.github.io is what I would do for me. But you're going to change badgernested to whatever your username is, right? And we can change this description to whatever we want. We'll just change it to badger, I guess. I don't know. So we're going to create this fork, and it's going to take a second. And it's going to copy all the files from the old one that we had to this new one. And we can change this any way we want, and it will upload onto our page. Now, the thing is, this is that in order to access our page, we're going to go to Settings, and we're going to go to Pages. Now, it will take a bit for this page right here. This is our page for our blog. It will take a little bit for it to initially load, but we can open the tab right here. And as we can see, it's not loaded yet, so we will just keep that there for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to edit some of these files so that we can have it set up the way that we want. Now the first file we're going to set up is this config.yaml file, Y-M-L, it's pronounced YAML. And we're going to edit this file and we have to edit this file very carefully because YAML files use these spaces here as a way to structure the file. So all we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to change text after these, right? So don't change text before, just change it after. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change a couple of these texts to kind of show how they work. So name, let's put in badger nested. And for our description, let's write a badger on the internet. Now we'll change the avatar later after we upload an image, but we can change the avatar here. Now these are a bunch of social media links that will be displayed on the bottom of the site, right? So we can add an email, for example, like email test at email.com, right? And we can add any other one of these that we have. <clears throat> we can also add to Discus, Google Analytics, um, to be able to activate these various things here. Now, this URL here, right, we're going to leave these unchanged because of the way that we named our project. These will stay unnamed and they will work properly. But in some instances, we're going to want to change that. So, for example, if we named our project just Badger Nested Project, right, we would want to change this to Badger Nested Project because the name of that will correlate with where the website actually is hosted. But since we have it as the default badgernested.github.io, it's going to be, you're going to want to have that be blank. So just leave that alone. 
Now, this extra stuff down here is important stuff to tell Jekyll, the static generator that we're using to create our blob, to do special things. So we're going to leave this all alone, right? And we're going to save this file by going to the bottom of the screen and we're going to commit changes. I don't know why my mouse is being so tricky. <clears throat> so now the file is saved and we will see the changes in a couple of minutes, right? So we're going to do some other things in the meantime so that we can see the changes all at once. Now, this right here, this orange right here, means that your website is updating right now. And it takes a little bit for it to update before it actually, you know, has everything ready. So once this changes, you're going to see that the website has updated. Now, what we can do is, how about we change our about page? So we'll go here, and this is an about page about, um, you know, it's just an about page about what you're doing and stuff like that. So let's change this to just saying I'm a cool person who is very cool right so you don't want to change this stuff up here this is called a header right and you're generally you're not going to want to change that information because that information is important to tell the um, the the program where to link the pages and stuff like that See, layout page means that if this is using the default page layout for this particular page. The title is the title that will appear on the top of the screen, and since we have this as an about page, we're not going to really want to change this. I mean, we can change it to about me, right? And it will display about me on the top of the title. And then this permalink right here is the actual link that will that relative to your website that actually indicates where this is actually being posted. So you can also do different kinds of styling by having, for example, italic like that and bold like that. And we can also add a link like this, GitHub, like that, and we can get the link to get we can get the link to GitHub like this, and this will make a link. And there are all sorts of different ways that we can use different styling to be able to add different kinds of features like links and images. This is called Markdown, and in the description I have a guide for Markdown so that you can learn how to do all sorts of things on your pages. And it will require a little bit of experimentation, but you can do all sorts of different things. So we're going to just save this for now. We're going to commit our changes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an image, right? And we want to add an image so that way we can have an avatar. So we're going to go to the images folder and we're going to add a file and we're going to create, we're going to upload files this time. So we're going to choose a file. I'm just going to pick something random. And I'm going to commit changes again. And I'm going to go to that file. So this is where the file is that we just uploaded. And I'm going to copy image link and I'm going to go into a new um, I'm going to go into a new one and I'm going to grab the link like this. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because that way the link will the image will display properly. I'm going to go back to config.yaml, not click the uh, wrong button. And I'm going to click on avatar and I'm going to change this to the length of the image that I created. And I'm going to save this again. Now you might be asking, well how do I add a blog post? Well that's actually pretty easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into posts here and we can already see that we already have a post here and this is a sample post. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the raw text from here, right? We're going to just copy everything. And we're going to make a new file. And what we're going to do is we're going to name it in a very specific format. We're going to name it in the current date. So we're going to do it in first the year. Then we're going to do the month. And then we're going to do the date. And then we are going to do the name that we're going to use with no spaces. We're going to use we're going to not use spaces. We don't want to use spaces. So I'm going to just do test file. And then we're going to end it with .md, 
right? Now, it's very important that you save your file in this format because this is how Jekyll recognizes that it's a blog post and gets the date from the blog post, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the text below the header, right? And we're going to change the title here for our blog post, and we're going to change it to Badger Forever. I don't know why, but we can change it to whatever we want, and that would be like the title of your blog post. And I'm just going to write some simple stuff. I'm going to write badgers are interesting animals that are mammals. They are very cool, and I like them very much. And we're going to just have this be the text. I'm not going to do any markdown or anything. Just I want it to be very simple. And we can save this now. And we should have a post when we actually view the page once it's updated, right? Now, the last thing we're going to do, is I'm going to go over, and it's a little bit more complicated, but we're going to make a new page, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to About MD, and we're going to copy, again, the whole thing, right? And we're going to make a new page in this base directory. So we're going to go and add file. We're going to create a new file, and we're going to name it test.md, right? Now, it's important that you name your files with the end of md because that tells it's a markdown file. So we're going to go and we're going to name this we're going to we're going to take out the um, stuff on the bottom and we are going to change the title to test and we're going to change the permalink to test, right? And that way if we link to test, we'll see this page instead of the about page. And I'm just going to write test document. Now I'm going to save this. And what I'm going to do is I am going to go to, I believe, Layouts. And I'm going to go to Default. And this is an HTML page that tells us how we organize our pages. Now, how do we add test to our late list of links? Well, how we're going to do this is we are going to link this. We're going to find where we have the, the links, right? So we have the blog, and we have about, and we have nothing else here, right? So what we can do is we can add that new link that we added, which was test, and we can add it like that, right there, right? And this is nice because we can actually add additional pages instead of just blog pages. So like if we wanted to have a page where you showed off all your artwork, right? You could have a page that was custom built like this, right? So we're going to save this, we're gonna commit changes, right? Now, I've gone over all the basic changes for our website, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes before this page generates, and we're gonna see if we have any problems with it. So this is what our end result looks like with our website, right? So we have our blog posts right here, Right? So we have the original post, and we also have the one that we created. And you can see that it has the date right here. And so we'll go back, and we can see the different blog posts like that. We have our About page right here, and we can see that we have the Markdown indicated right here. So we can see the italic bold. We have the website link, which we can open in a new tab. And then we also have the new page, test. And now we can design actually a lot with this um, basic amount of information. We can do it all without having to, you know, work with any sort of complicated tools that, you know, you, know, you might not be familiar with. So this is how we can set up a very basic website using Jekyll and GitHub.